we all suffer three deaths. The first death is the day that we give our last breath, the day that we die. Our second death is the day that we are buried, never to be seen on the face of the earth again. And our third death, the most dreaded death of all, is to be forgotten. And that's why I do this. <laughs> Big ones could go down the middle because sure. they'll occupy more space. I'll open more of those. The work that I do today is building altars for the other Los Muertos. How's that one? One of my friends coined this title on me, Altarista, so I've been called an Altarista all these years. An altar for me is a beautiful way of celebrating the dead the process of remembering and gathering items for the altar. It's like a prayer, but it's also a release. Making flowers is a tradition in my family. My mother was quite talented artisan, and so I learned early. My mother came from a small village in Mexico, and she brought her traditions. She was very adamant actually for me to learn about my ancestors, my family. She really wanted me to carry on, not so much doing altars like I do today, but to carry on the tradition of remembering. And it ties in with what I do today with the other Los Muertos. Okay, yeah. For Day of the Dead, we don't celebrate death, we celebrate life. We invite the souls to come and visit us. I am making the arch or the arco. When we fill the archway with paper flowers, it becomes the doorway for the souls to find the way back to us. Look at how many hands have to go through and open up these flowers. Our energy that we pour into it becomes the drawing for our ancestors and our loved ones to find us. For Day of the Dead, we would go to the cemetery at the outskirts of East Los Angeles. My aunt and my mother would decorate an altar with something very simple, and then they would call us to come and eat the meal they had brought with them. I'm gonna put this big one in the middle because it's too big. Okay. The other Los Muertos was not celebrated publicly in a big party like it is today. This public celebration actually began at Self-Help Graphics. Self-Help Graphics was one of the very first organizations to ever celebrate Dia de, de los Muertos in earnest in the United States. Our Day of the Dead consisted of like 12 people, a few nuns and a few artists, and everybody brought a dish. I brought mole. I remember, I brought mole. The co-director there, Sister Karen Bocalera, who was an important person in my artistic life and in my personal life, wanted to have an event that would involve the community, where they could do art, where they could bring people to a cultural thing. The mission of Self-Help Graphics has always been to bring art into the community, to bring the community into art experience. This is what Sister Karen really believed, that art belonged to everyone. Sister Karen was definitely ahead of her time, and we were all a little bit crazy, so we went right along with her. <laughs> The artists and Sister Karen carved out almost a template that is now used all over the country. They took Dia de los Muertos from something that was very intimate, very familial, uh, and blew it up with the purpose of building community. Dia de los Muertos constantly evolves, and it's a reflection of the community as the Chicano identity has evolved, as the city of Los Angeles has evolved. Any sort of fusion or exchange of ideas. Um, I think it's so, it's so LA. I was born in East Los Angeles when I've lived here all my life. I have nine children. I was a school teacher for 28 years. 
My whole career was in my immediate community, and I think I'm always a teacher. I think we could add a couple of these, like you added these, just to bring back this color. California was Mexico until 1849. Before that, it was the indigenous people. Here in Los Angeles, it was the Tongva people. It's important to know that history because many people who are here have not been recognized as part of this land. With Dia de los Muertos, you have, you know, obviously the Spanish Catholic influence, you have the indigenous Aztec influence, and then you have the remix that the Chicano community put on here. Chicano basically is Mexican born in the United States. I mean, that's literally what it is. But now the Chicano movement has also taken on Latinos of all, from all countries, from all backgrounds, from all histories. I would say that Chicanismo has a place for everyone. The way Chicanos and folks here on the east side celebrate Day of the Dead is different than the way it's celebrated in Mexico, but very much in line with the spiritual tradition of it. The biggest difference is access to the cemeteries at night. Here in the US, at sundown, they're closed. So that immediately kind of shifts the way you can celebrate it and how you celebrate it. We have been partnering with Grand Park to bring in artists, to bring in community organizations and individuals to create different altars. We, of course, always have our master altar maker artist, Ophelia Sparza, and so she'll make the large community altar that people can then contribute to on their own. How do you grow to be a master altar maker, right? Obviously, she was taught by her mother, and that tradition's carried on in her family. Is there a sister Karen down there? But it takes a different shape when you're doing it amongst the public. It makes me feel good that the young people, they're actually really interested in it. When I was a kid, I didn't really grasp it, but now, you know, I, I, I see how important it is as far as where we come from, who we are. The Day of the Dead is celebrated two days. The first day is for kids and babies and pets who've passed away. The second day is for grown-ups who've passed away. It's, in, in Spanish, it's called De Los Motos. It's our way to connect to other communities. And sometimes it's the only time that we connect with these communities, but it's an important opportunity to do so. Her father passed away last year, and she said, huh, it would be neat to build one for my dad. So it's not in our direct cultural lineage, but I think it would be an interesting way to celebrate. I think it's a great to way to remember someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have put my mother somewhere in the center. My grandmother would say they were with us because look, the bread is drier. They sucked the life out of it. And the water is a little lower. So you could see how we can't stop doing this. Mm -hmm. We can't. We have to keep the third death from ever occurring. We're sharing the other Los Muertos with the rest of the world. And the more we understand why we celebrate certain ways, it gives you a whole insight about each other. Culture is an evolving thing. And when you mix art into culture and artists into culture, then anything goes. It's open. Anything can happen. We work with artists who are less concerned with physical walls and physical order spaces and more concerned with how their work affects communities. Finding ways to go above and beyond borders is something that we're very good at in this community.